Hey guys, if you own a firearm, and especially if you own a firearm for home defense or for self-defense, uh, you should definitely know how to break your gun down, how to clean it, and how to lubricate it. It's part of making sure that it's going to function properly for you, um, so that if you need to use it, it's going to work right. You know, cleaning and lubricating your pistols or rifles or shotguns. Uh, just make sure that they're going to function properly. There's a lot of moving parts in here and a lot of metal on metal. Um, I like to clean my guns after every single range trip. To me, it's therapeutic. I just enjoy doing it. Um, it doesn't matter if I shot 10 rounds or 500 that day. I will come home and, and clean my gun. Uh, we'll make sure that it is safe here. And... So that's basically taking your slide off. There's some variances between pistols, but that's that's the majority of it. And then here you would just take out your guide rod and spring, and then the barrel would slide out. And for most people, that's all you need to do. Uh, and then we can start the cleaning process. Every once in a great while, I'll pull like a, the back plate off and put, take that striker out. Uh, but for most just general cleaning, that's all you need to do. It literally just takes a few seconds. And as you can see, I only shot two magazines through this at the range today. So it was, what, 24 rounds. And you can see the feed ramp here. It's filthy. Barrel's got all kinds of stuff on it. So I'm just going to kind of clean things up here. So the purpose of this video is not to show you how to clean a gun. Um, it's more to show you the products that are needed to, to clean a gun and to show you something that might make things a little bit easier and more convenient for you. So for the last probably like 15, 20 years, I honestly kind of use like a hodgepodge of stuff here. Uh, I got patches. I usually use two by two or three by three, but generally two by two is what I will buy. Um, this here is kind of like one of like my main kits. So the blue towel in here is what I usually will put down on the table. and. So this would go down first, and then I would usually lay my gun and stuff, all the parts, stuff like that, on that thing, okay? And then in here, I just use these old toothbrushes. Actually, I buy them brand new. Um, and you can get like a six-pack, I don't know, for a few dollars. They're not like real expensive, um, but I'll use those. So that's usually in there. I usually keep patches in here. And then I got more patches. Um, and then this one here is what I'll use basically when I'm done cleaning. So this cloth, uh, this is for like wiping the oil off the slide. Uh, like after you get things all back together, cleaning the outside of the magazine, stuff like that. So this is kind of like the main thing. And then I also use picks for like cleaning along the, the slide. Uh, there's different shapes, different sizes of those. I use boar snakes. I typically shoot nine millimeter and 22 more than anything else. So I'll use these on pretty much every cleaning. Um, and then I have like a rod and then like the, the tip that would go on the end, almost like the brushes for those. I got more patches. I just have a hodgepodge of stuff. I got a bunch of different uh, boar brushes for different calibers. And then I do have like little kits, uh, like this one stays in my range bag and it's got all kinds of little stuff in it and cleaning stuff and uh, solvents and oils. And then I got bigger kits. Again, just a hodgepodge of stuff. I've actually never even used this one. I've had this one for years, um, but just all kinds of stuff. And then you obviously need uh, solvents or cleaners. Um, and then you need different types of uh, lubricants. I use this one here, the Lucas, probably more than any. Uh, but I've also got like Remington and the other kind. You know, cleaning supplies aren't like crazy expensive. Uh, like these patches are $7 and something. These prices were years ago. They're probably more than that now. But boar snakes are 15 or 20 bucks. But you start adding all these things up. I think these picks were like 20 or $30. Um, and you can get, you know, a hundred, couple hundred dollars wrapped up in just this stuff. Most of the sprays are between seven to $15 per bottle. 
So yeah, it can get a little bit expensive. So I had a company offer to send me a gun cleaning kit. So this is the kit here. Uh, I believe it's pronounced Natiti uh, Solid Brass Gun Cleaning Kits. They have a pink version, a black version. And we can see on the end there are some long Q-tips. And I forgot to mention in this patch there, or that bag there, I do keep Q-tips in that, and those get used a lot. Um, so there's the information. Uh, these are available on Amazon, um, and I think on Walmart as well. And as you can see, it's 212 pieces. Um, I know kind of right there it says rifle cleaning, but it's, it's for handguns and shotguns and stuff as well. Um, but it's got a lot of stuff with it. So I figured we'd do a quick unboxing, kind of see what this is all about. I'm going to clear all this stuff off the table so that I have room for the new gun cleaning kit. All right, we'll kind of get into this here. Again, I mentioned this, that there were like these swabs. I don't know an exact number. Um, probably close to 50 or so. All right, so there is a gun cleaning mat that's included with this kit. So that's actually pretty nice. There's a little bit of a crease in it right there from how it was in the package. That'll probably work itself out. And again, this is what I was kind of using before. I would just throw that down. Uh, so this should pre prevent any type of solvents or anything like that. Plus it's got a, a grip on the back side to prevent that from moving. Whereas this towel will literally just go anywhere. That doesn't move on you. And I actually see on here all of the things that are included with that. And it shows like a layout of the case. And there is an email right there if you need to get a hold of them. And the cotton swabs were a hundred pieces. So the case itself is actually a really nice, very thick plastic, uh, almost like what a power tools or something like that would come in. Uh, like, you know, squeezing really hard. There's no flex in that at all. So it's a decent case. It's got their branding right there. I don't necessarily care for that that much, but. It's not a deal breaker at all. Uh, a little bit flimsy on the locks there, but. So then we also have a diagram here. All the different parts that come with this. And this looks like something just kind of separating the two sides. So starting here at the bottom of this case is a little bottle, like a plastic bottle. You could use this for oil um, or for solvent. It's not a great bottle though. And this thing here, looks like it only comes up to allow you to squeeze it. There, it kind of locks it off. Um, I prefer something with like a real small, like almost like needle point tip on it. And I would probably just take my little bottle and just throw it in there and leave that and not use theirs. Moving over here, we have some pretty large patches. These ones are seven inches by seven inches. Uh, then we have a bunch of different brass brushes. Uh, we, again, we have 270, 12 gauge, 22. There's all kinds of sizes in here. And then underneath those is a pick. If I can pull that out. So we have this metal pick here. And again, the way that you kind of use this is you put one of the patches over the tip of this, and then you kind of slide it along your rails, or if there's like intricate parts that you need to kind of get down into, uh, you typically don't take the metal against that. You'll put a patch with some solvent or something like that and run that along there. And I don't know how well the camera will pick that up on those brushes, uh, but it does give you your caliber size on the ends of all those, just in case you pull out a few and then it'll, it'll give a corresponding number down here along them. I'll show you that there. Uh, 
And just for any of you that are new to shooting or to guns, if you look at your brushes or the mops or the uh, patch holders and you don't see something for nine millimeter, a 357 uh, works just the same uh, for a nine millimeter. So like if you look here, it'll be for a 357, a 38 or a nine millimeter for that brush. And for those of you that don't know, like you would take your brush and put it on the rod and then you take a barrel and you basically, I only like to go in the same way that the bullet would travel. Some people don't care. They just go back and forth. It doesn't really matter to them. Um, if I were using a brush, I typically will push it through. I'll actually unscrew it, pull the rod back out, rethread it and do that several times with solvent on it. It's probably not necessary to unscrew it, but it just kind of protects that rifling. You can see how dirty that barrel is. Uh, but you see those little grooves in there? That's the rifling of the barrel. So then after you've ran a brush through a little bit, you can then grab one of the mops. And like this again is the 357 one. Again, nine millimeter. You could put that on and then run it through. And it kind of basically starts cleaning the debris that the brush kind of got loose in there. They were 14 of the brushes and only nine of the mops. But as you can see, 12 gauge, 20, 50 cal, 410, 357, 22, 40 cal, 30, and 17. So you've done your brush, you've done your mop. Next up would be uh, running some patches through. Um, I don't know if these are actually marked in sizes or not. I was trying to see here, but there are different thicknesses of these for different barrels as well. Obviously you can see there's different sizes there and you could still take a patch and you could still put some solvent on it if you want. And then basically you fold that up and you would feed that through the little eyelet there. And again, once that's on, you could have your solvent on there. Then you can feed that down through your barrel as well. Again, some people like to push it through and then pull it out um, and then pull the rod back through without the patch on there. Some people just ram it in a bunch of times. I don't know if it makes a huge difference either way. So these little things right here are some adapters. Uh, not every single thing just screws into the end of this rod as it is. So like, let's look at this 12 gauge uh, mop here and you can see it obviously doesn't fit. So what we would do is take one of these little adapters, put that on there, and then that should fit that. And then I didn't show it yet, but where I got this from is up here in this. And there's a couple different ones of these handles. And then there's a whole bunch of extensions because obviously if you're trying to clean a 12 gauge, this right here would not even get halfway down your barrel. So what you do in that case is you just add on these types of uh, extensions. And there's several of those that you can add to, you know, if, if you've got a 20 some inch barrel, whatever, you can add as many of these as what you need to get to the length that you need. So this is going to be probably too big to even fit in the frame right now. But as you can see, I, and I can even make that longer. There's still more in there. And then I would still just thread the end of that on there. So for long barrel shotguns or rifles, you can you know still be able to get this down in there. So up next, we have some muzzle guards. Those are useful for cleaning rifles and even revolvers. Uh, they're good for like if you have a lever action rifle or maybe even a bolt action um, where basically like an upper and lower don't come apart. And so you could take this and more or less put it like on the end of your muzzle. So pretend this is a revolver. You would take one of those muzzle guards and put over it like this here. And again, then you can take your cleaning rod with a brush or patches or whatever and go through this way on your revolver. Or again, if this were a rifle, you can go down muzzle to breech um, and it protects the edge of your barrel, the crown of the barrel from getting damaged or anything. Again, you wouldn't need to do that on a pistol that breaks down. You wouldn't need to use these on an AR-15 because the upper and lower separate. Uh, but there are certain rifles and revolvers that you would want to use these on. 
over here we have a 50 cal jag and then a bunch more over here for a bunch of different calibers and for those of you that don't know a jag is a, just another tool to use to, to clean out the barrel um, you can see like these little lines and stuff that go in this and so basically you put your, like your patch on solvent put it on here and then you would put this on the uh, the cleaning rod and then you would push this through again most people will unscrew it and pull the rod back out without this you don't necessarily have to it's the best practice so to do it that way but you just run this through a couple times and this is almost the exact same size as the diameter of your barrel and when you push that patch and stuff through on there it basically cleans all the stuff on the edges of the inside of the barrel and when i was looking at the sizes of these this one right there says 375. i'm honestly not sure if it is for a 375 rifle um, or if that's supposed to be a 357 caliber because then it says 40 44 45. Um, so that might be a misprint on their part i'm not 100 sure on that and moving to the top side of the case not much up here we have a few brushes this one's like nylon bristles those are almost like a toothbrush but a lot stiffer so that's fine to use on just about any parts of your gun uh, we got a brass brush here again that's fine for most parts uh, brass doesn't really scratch then we have like a stainless one um, i'd probably be cautious using this on anything that's delicate especially anything on the outside of your gun because that can definitely scratch it up then we have a couple cleaning rods and then all those extensions with it so at the time of me recording this these are coming in at 36 dollars on Amazon it says it's 212 pieces now a hundred of them are the swabs they are long and wooden handle ones and then the patches make up you know I don't know 40 or 50 other pieces but you still get a lot of stuff for this $36 and it's all in one place uh, the stuff that I have right now like I have it just like in the basement I have it in different bags so it will definitely be nice having all of the cleaning stuff in one kit. Plus you do get a pretty decent mat with this as well. So I will leave an Amazon link for this gun cleaning kit down in the video description. Um, if you guys want to find out more information, it'll be down there. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And that's going to be it on this one. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.